SpaceX's preparations for Starship Flight 10 are intensifying, with major developments unfolding at Starbase. The spotlight is on Booster 16, which recently completed a key static fire test, advancing the path toward the next orbital flight attempt. Meanwhile, testing of the Raptor 3 engine, the next-gen propulsion system critical to Starship's long-term success, hit a serious snag. A recent test ended in a catastrophic explosion, raising questions about the engine's reliability and the challenges SpaceX faces as it pushes the boundaries of rocket engineering. Just a week on from Starship Flight 9, SpaceX are already gearing up for Flight 10 with Booster 16 static fire, plus two new launch pads are coming as a huge update dropped on the Space Coast, providing insight into the massive scale that SpaceX is planning in Florida. Now that the high bay is completely gone, we anticipated that SpaceX would move fairly quickly to get the Gigabay operational, and we're seeing increasing signs that assumption was correct. Meanwhile, over at Mega Bay 1, the door was open and Booster 16 was rolled out into the ring yard in anticipation of its rollout to the launch complex for engine testing. And, Ship 37 departed the Massey outpost and started rolling back to the build site. With its crowd proofing now complete, the rocket was bound for one of the Mega Bay 2 work stands for further fit outs before the static fire campaign. As the ship arrived outside of Mega Bay 2, crews immediately began rolling Booster 16 back between the bays and through the Sanchez site. The rockets are having to take the long way to Highway 4, while the normal build site gate remains an active construction zone. Back at the build site, another new pile driving rig was delivered. Within just a few hours, the equipment was offloaded and put to work driving sheet piles in preparation for the construction of the new mega bay. One of the rigs was busy back by the former high bay site, while the other worked near the highway. These are used to drive piles, the foundation pillars into the ground, preparing the soil for a substantial building to rest upon. This is particularly challenging in the marshy area. That is Boca Chica. Of course, this could be for another structure, but given we know the Gigabay is due to be built, I take this as a promising indication that construction is set to begin very soon. Over at Massey's, testing for the next generation of super heavy boosters is well underway. On Monday, we observed a fully frosty booster 18.1, likely undergoing structural testing. The ice visible is probably due to liquid nitrogen being inside, which is used for cryogenic testing of these test articles. It's unclear whether the pistons around the test article were active during the test, or if this was merely a cryogenic test to determine the performance parameters in cold conditions. It's always tricky with these test tanks because we have to view from a distance. One possibility later on in the test campaign is a test to destruction, but if that is planned, it might not take place within the structural test stand to avoid damaging it. But if SpaceX truly wants to determine the absolute pressure and design limits of the next generation booster, they might need to push this test article to its limit. We've seen that once or twice before. Now, the testing continued, and we observed the tank becoming frosty again as SpaceX conducted a second round. This second round, however, appeared somewhat different from the first. As the tank remained largely empty during most of the testing, with only the bottom section getting frosty. So either the cryogenic load was very low, or this was a test of the header tank located at the bottom of the test tank. And yes, that ship 37 in the background. Departing the Massey's test site. It appears the testing campaign for the ship has wrapped up, and it's now time to complete the still rather rough looking heat shield if it's truly required in six to eight weeks time. Naturally, we've seen SpaceX work on these heat shields rather quickly before, but of all the vehicles sent to Massey's for cryogenic testing, Ship 37 certainly appears to be in the roughest state. It'll be interesting to see how swiftly SpaceX can cover all of these underlying blankets with the actual shield that needs to be fitted. On top, Ship 37 has since returned to Mega Bay 2, where it will now be prepared for its static fire campaign, likely in about a month's time. Ship 37 and the new Block 3 Super Heavy Test Tank are cryo-tested at the Massey Outpost. Construction continues at the build site, 
and SpaceX sends Booster 16 to the launch site to attempt a static fire. The tank farm at Massey spooled up prepping for Ship 37's first round of cryoproofing. A short time later, both of the ship's tanks were filled and held for a couple of hours. Afterward in usual fashion, the ship was detanked completing the initial testing. Up the road at the build site, work continued on the Star Factory building as crews endeavored to add a parapet wall to the top of the new end wall that was added prior to the demolition of the end of the building. Then, the ship was again filled with liquid nitrogen and held at pressure for one more round of tests. And, the ship was once again detanked, concluding the day's activities at the Massey outpost. Meanwhile, over at the launch complex's pad B, a crane moved the booster quick disconnect hood into place in what seemed to be a fit check. Whatever adjustments were needed didn't take long though, as just a few hours later it was once again lifted to the launch mount and installed. Meanwhile, over at the tank farm, a pump motor was lifted and installed onto one of the new liquid oxygen pumps as work continues to get the pad B station ready for operations later this year. That afternoon, the door on Mega Bay 2 was partially open allowing us to see that Ship 38 had been relocated from the turntable to the building center work stand now that stacking was completed. This also means one of the next components. We'll likely see is the thrust section at the bottom of the booster, which of course features significant changes to components such as the heat shielding with the transition to Raptor 3. Therefore, this is one of the most exciting parts we'll see during stacking. Perhaps next week, the most concerning aspect at this stage for the readiness of Block 3 is, as we've all come to expect at this point, the ship. While Star Factory likely already has its components for that ship, stacking hasn't yet been completed. However, now that the Ship 38 is fully stacked as well, this could happen any day now. Over at the new orbital launch pad, we're observing an increasing number of tests that certainly resemble catch. Simulations with the chopsticks. Naturally, a ship catch is anticipated for the next flight, Flight 10, given the ongoing issues with the upper stage. However, Flight 11 or Flight 12 could be potential targets based on Elon Musk's estimate of a catch as early as two to three months from now. And for that, according to the render shown by SpaceX, they would use the second tower to catch the ship. That's the reason for the testing. Speaking of Pad B, or well the second pad, SpaceX Communications Dan Hewitt dropped a bomb on X the other day, saying quote, So here we go, it's Pad B, it's not Pad B, it's always been Pad B. However, SpaceX engine testing facility things got rather lively this week. Raptor 3 engine underwent a brief firing followed by a relight test. You can observe the engine shutting down and then mere seconds later from the same spot the plume reappears. And, it appears a Raptor engine got a tad excited as near the end of its lengthy burn you can clearly see an explosion occurring. Whilst the last time a Raptor exploded it. Seemed more like it happened on the test stand this time it appears the engine experienced. A rather abrupt halt. But again it's testing. These things do happen and sometimes are intended to happen. In total 20 Raptor engine tests were carried out last week with a blender of Raptor 2 and Raptor 3 engines being tested. These engines running on liquid methane and oxygen are among the most complex ever developed, aiming for unmatched efficiency and reusability. With each new iteration, Raptor 1, 2, and now 3, SpaceX moves closer to its goal. But the path is anything but smooth. On May 22, 2025, an explosion during a test of the latest Raptor 3 engine shook SpaceX's McGregor facility. During a routine static fire at SpaceX's McGregor testing site in Texas, a powerful explosion occurred engulfing the test stand in flames. The engine tested is widely believed to be a Raptor 3, SpaceX's most advanced engine design to date. No injuries were reported, and emergency crews contained the fire within minutes. The facility's safety protocols, specifically built for high-risk scenarios like this, functioned as intended. Though SpaceX has not confirmed the exact cause, initial expert analysis points to either a catastrophic engine failure, known in industry terms as a rapid unscheduled disassembly, or a malfunction in the test stand's ground system equipment responsible for managing the flow of the volatile liquid methane and liquid oxygen used as fuel. 
This event wasn't a random anomaly. It fits a pattern in SpaceX's development methodology, test to failure, gather data, and iterate rapidly. The Raptor engine has evolved through three distinct generations. Raptor 1 laid the foundation with a full-flow staged combustion cycle, an extremely efficient but complex design. Raptor 2 introduced major simplifications, fewer external parts, more welded joints, and better performance at a lower cost. Raptor 3, however, is designed not only for higher thrust, targeting up to 300 tons at sea level, but also for dramatically improved reliability. One of Raptor 3's key innovations is the elimination of external engine shrouds. Sensors and plumbing are now integrated within the engine's housing wall. This change reduces external failure points, but it comes with trade-offs. While it improves durability and manufacturing efficiency, it makes post-test servicing more difficult. The McGregor explosion mirrors earlier failures within the Starship program. All these events highlight a persistent challenge, managing highly volatile Subcooled propellants under extreme pressure and temperature in both tests and flight environments. The difference with the Raptor 3 incident is that it happened in a controlled environment. Ground tests allow engineers to isolate and understand failures without risking human life or losing a full vehicle. These are opportunities to learn what doesn't work under intense conditions. Given Raptor 3's increased integration and fewer external components, failures like this help. Validate whether the new design meets expectations or whether unseen vulnerabilities still exist. SpaceX does not avoid failure. The company's strategy, often summarized as fail fast, learn faster, is fundamentally different from traditional aerospace methods that prioritize exhaustive pretesting and extended development timelines. Each failure is treated as a checkpoint, not a catastrophe. The goal wasn't just to fix a symptom, but to understand the underlying mechanism. Raptor 3 incorporates those lessons. Its redesign aims to eliminate the specific weaknesses seen. In Raptor 2, welded joints replace bolted connections that might loosen under stress. Internal plumbing reduces external leak points. More robust preloading on joints. Nitrogen purge systems and improved propellant drains all stem from direct post-failure data. None of this happens in a vacuum. SpaceX wants Starship to be fully reusable, reliably reignitable, and cost-effective. But none of this is achievable without understanding where the system breaks down under stress. The Raptor 3 explosion at McGregor, while visually dramatic, fits perfectly within this broader goal. It is not a setback. It is data. And in SpaceX's world, Data drives progress. The Raptor 3 test explosion reminds us that reaching Mars isn't just about bold ambition. It's about relentless engineering. Refinement. Failures like the one at McGregor are painful but necessary steps toward reliability. At scale. With Raptor 3, SpaceX is chasing not just power, but trustworthiness. And every failed engine, every fireball, is a lesson embedded into the next iteration. As flight rates increase and testing accelerates, we'll likely see more of these events, but they're paving the way toward a reusable space transport system that works every time. If Raptor 3 delivers on its promise after these trials, it could mark the point where rocket reliability catches up with rocket ambition. And that would change everything, not just for SpaceX but for the future of space travel itself. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.